It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Dr. William H. Peterson, writer and economist. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Homer E. Capehart, United States Senator from Indiana. Senator Capehart, it's a great pleasure to have you with us tonight, sir, on the Chronoscope. <coughs> Thank you, sir. And now, sir, uh, how do you feel about Stalin's death? Do you think that the free world stands to gain anything from, from this, from his passing? I'm fearful not. No, I do not think so. I think the condition, the situation there will be just as it has been under Stalin. Well, sir, uh, the news tonight is that our own government is hoping to exploit this uncertainty in, in Russia at the moment. Are you in favor of our government? Well, I'm in favor of our government doing anything that is that they can do that is necessary uh, to, to win the Cold War and win the Korean War. And I have absolutely no objections to anything that they do. I think they yes. ought to do it. I think it's the responsibility of the people to do it. Our, our viewers uh, recall that you have taken a rather firm stand, even back in the McCarthy controversy, in favor of more aggressive action on our part uh, in, in the Far East. Now, sir, do you still favor uh, aggressive action? Do you still favor uh, doing whatever's necessary to win that war? I certainly do. I, I'm, it seems to me that if we're unable to win the Korean War, uh, that uh, we certainly are going to show weakness and come near having a big war with Russia if we're unable to win a little war. And if we show weakness at the moment, I think we're less likely to have a big war with uh, Russia if we win the Korean, Korean War and show strength. Well, you from strength Senator, rather than weakness. Uh, Senator, what do you think of uh, MacArthur's policy? Would you say that history has vindicated MacArthur? Well, I think it has because the Korean War will soon be, soon be three years old and we haven't won it. We haven't made any progress and... Uh, uh, Lord knows that we, we've got to someday win it. Well, General, General Van Fleet has been testifying in Washington this week. Uh, do you interpret his testimony to mean that he holds very much the same views that General MacArthur held? I think they're, all, I think they're exactly the same views that MacArthur has had all along. Yes. And, and as, as a student of this situation, you feel that we have to take the moves that uh, are necessary in order to achieve a military victory in Korea. Well, I know only one way to win, and that's to win, and that's to use every conceivable, uh, uh, and take every conceivable advantage of everything that we have, well, and use every every bit of our our material. And uh, well, Senator, you are uh, uh, you, of course, are chairman of the very important Banking and Currency Committee, and as such, that makes you a sort of guardian of the country's economy. Now. Uh, uh, I believe that you've been criticized in some circles because uh, some of your critics say that you're hedging on this matter of, of controls. You have a, you're, you're for relieving, uh, getting rid of controls, as I understand it, but you want some standby laws uh, uh, left there. Now, uh, how, how do you defend your position there, sir? Well, <clears throat> there's no relationship whatsoever between... Uh, uh, they can a continuation of controls at the moment, which are not needed, and what I'm advocating. I'm advocating a standby control law, which in case of a big emergency would permit the President of the United States to immediately freeze all prices, wages, and rents uh, for a period of 60 to 90 days. Well, now, do I, do I understand that you, you are opposed to price, wage, and rent controls? Well, I'm opposed to them at the moment, I, 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 but only... Uh, only uh, because that they're not needed. I'm not opposed to price, wage, and rent controls. Uh, uh, for example, if uh, during a big emergency, during a big war, our government is taking anywhere from 40 to 50 percent of our national products for war use, leaving only uh, 50 to 60 percent for civilian use, because under those circumstances, uh, you certainly must ration the goods and you certainly must have price control. I... And I'm only thinking in terms 
of a big emergency where our government would be taking, uh, say, anywhere from 40 to 50 percent of our goods. And under those circumstances, I think we must have price, wage, and rent control you do in Reisney. You don't, you, 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 all controls will go off on April the 30th. All right? controls will go off on April 30th. And, and, and you are in go favor off. of that going off. Oh, I certainly am. I voted against uh, a continuation of controls last July, and had, this, had the Congress followed my vote, we would have gotten rid of controls as far as back as last July. And this, this standby legislation, which uh, I believe some businesses are saying uh, you're holding a sword over their heads, uh, that you simply want to use uh, in the event of emergency. That's all, and only in an event of emergency, and then only for a period of 60 to 90 days until such time as the Congress can decide whether they ought to be continued. And in the wisdom of the Congress, during that period, they might well decide that they were not needed, and I might come to that conclusion myself. Well, sir, now moving on to the other big question. You come from a, a big farm state, Indiana. Uh... How, how do you feel, sir, about this decline in farm prices? Are you for low farm prices or high ones? Well, I'm certainly for high farm prices. That is, I'm for a prosperous farmer, purely on the grounds that the farm income, uh, or the national income, is always seven times the farm income, and if you permit the farm income to decline, uh, then your national income will decline uh, in proportion, which means less jobs in the city and less business uh, for... Uh, on well, our now, business well, concerns Senator, in America. What about this uh, New Zealand beef, which we consumers have been enjoying? Some nice, tasty steak and so on. Uh, how do you feel about New Zealand and foreign uh, foods coming into our country? I have no objections to their coming in unless uh, the production in the United States is such and uh, under the law our government is subsidizing our farmers, then uh, I certainly am opposed to it. I'd much prefer to to buy the beef from New Zealand or the eggs and uh, the, uh, cheese or, or uh, uh, butter from other countries and give it to them or give it to some other people throughout well, the world and save transportation charges. Well, Senator, let, let's take this little situation. You <coughs> are a member, or, uh, I believe, of the Taft wing of the Republican Party. Now, are you going to be uncomfortable with the Republican administration buying all these millions of pounds of butter down there? Well, I... I Please keep this in mind, that we Republicans have inherited a lot of things, and some of many of them are not good. Now, we inherited the, this uh, a butter situation. We inherited a law that uh, does not expire until uh, 1954, in which uh, we guaranteed to the farmers uh, uh, that we would uh, the 90 percent parity. Did you and vote for that? You're in favor of yes, that. Yes, I'm uh, in favor of, uh, of uh, a 90 percent parity. Yes, yes, indeed. You're in favor of the federal government uh, guaranteeing uh, uh, a, a full market or a good price to American farmers. Well, I'm in favor of maintaining farm prosperity and doing whatever is necessary to maintain farm prosperity because I know just as certain as I'm sitting here that if, the far if you do not do that and if you do not have a prosperous farm farmer, then you're going to have a depression in this nation, and we, none of us want that. Do you, you remember that the beginning of the depression, the 32 depression, of course, started with the farmers. Well, now, as a practical politician, uh, which way do you think the knife's going to cut? Do, do you think that, uh, that, that, that opposition is building up to the Republican administration in the, in the, in the farm areas now? Well, I think opposition is building up uh, against the Republican Party at the moment, possibly, on those things that we inherited, which the people do not quite understand. In other words, we've got to deal with situations as they exist in Washington, and we had nothing to do with their making. And, I do not, and, I, and at the moment, I don't think the people quite understand that. Now, as soon as we can work out from under uh, many of the evils of the uh, New Deal administration, why then... We'll start straightening things out as they should be. Well, one of the things uh, the Republicans inherited, Senator Kapar, was very high taxes. Now, sir, would you be in favor of reducing taxes before we balance the budget? <clears throat> well, my position, I want to make my position perfectly clear, and that is that I'm in favor of, of reducing expenditures, balancing the budget, and likewise reducing taxes. And I think all three can be done, should be done, and must be done. Uh, and I think uh, I think the Republican the, Party will do it. The one place you're willing, however, to spend more money if necessary is in the Far East. Is that I'm willing to spend whatever money is necessary to win the Korean War and to win the Cold War, but I'm against wasting that money, and I'm fearful that it's going to be a long, drawn-out affair 
Therefore, I think we should keep our house in order at home by maintaining a sound economy and not discouraging our people uh, uh, too much with too, with taxes uh, which, high over a period of years. Do you, which, which do you put first in those three desires? Oh, I certainly would. Put, I certainly balance would, budge, balance I budget? certainly would reduce expenditures and balance the budget, yes. Well, one possible expenditure, Senator Capehart, is uh, further foreign aid. Now the British are here in Washington, and the West Germans and the French are on the way over. Uh, do you favor continued uh, financial aid to the Europeans? Well, I've always f favored aid, uh, and I, my quarrel has always been with the way they did it. Uh, I, uh, uh, I'm now in favor of helping them and aiding them, providing it is on a good, sound business basis, meaning that we get value received. Well, uh, well that's a final question, uh, Senator Capehart. Since you are so vitally concerned with the nation's economy, I'm sure that our viewers would appreciate a prediction from you, sir, as to what you think is in the economic future for the country. Do you expect a good year or a bad one? Well, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the uh, future. I, I, I can see nothing but uh, uh, full employment, uh, high wages, uh, and good business uh, for the businessman and for uh, the farmer. I, I see nothing that anyone should be fearful of, at least uh, for the next uh, 12 months. Well, I'm sure that our viewers very much appreciate this rather hopeful presentation of yours, sir, and thank you for being with us. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Dr. William H. Peterson. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Homer E. Capehart, United States Senator from Indiana. Have you noticed how much longer the days are getting? Soon it'll be spring and then Easter and then glorious days ahead. In countless homes, this is the season of planning for great activities. Easter, graduation, an anniversary, a June wedding. And every year, more and more people are giving Longine watches as gifts. For Easter, for any important gift occasion, nothing can be worn with greater pride and nothing that can be worn speaks more eloquently of your affection. When you give a Longines, it's very much like giving a watch made to your individual order, for Longines watches are made in many hundreds of styles to assure just this exclusiveness. And when you give a Longines, you give the world's most honored watch, for among the finest watches in all the world, Longines alone has won 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 Gold Medal Awards, and so many honors for accuracy. And yet do you know that you may buy and own or proudly give the Longine watch for as little as 7150. Longine, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift for Easter, for graduation, a wedding, or for an anniversary. Premier product of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longine. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longine and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longine Whitnor Watches. This Sunday, Ken Murray proves it's time to smile on the CBS television network.